So data acquisition systems can be broken down into four very simple blocks. Number one, we have a sensor, which can also be called a transducer. The sensor is merely a device that, that transforms one kind of energy into another. It's, a, it's equivalent to the microphone I'm speaking into. It picks up the pressure waves when I speak, converts those into a small signal, goes off to an amplifier somewhere, and then goes into another transducer, a speaker, to convert that back to more uh, powerful pressure waves. So a transducer takes a physical parameter and converts it into a small signal. That's all it does. They're, they come in all flavors and sizes. Then the next thing is what I call a sensor interface system. This is an, ele an electronic circuit that basically goes between the sensor and the outside world and the rest of the electronics in the inside world of the data acquisition system. Back in, uh, but when I started, uh, we used to call that a signal conditioner. You'd plug a sensor in and out of the signal conditioner would come an amplified signal. Well, they're more complicated than that now, but the good news is they're easier to use because it's pretty much all under software control. And then you have to have a way to take the signal that has been uh, conditioned and amplified and then store it for later analysis. This stuff happens fast. Pretty much almost all the crash tests in the world are over in less than a second and you've got to capture a lot of data for later analysis. So you've got a storage device. In the old days it used to be a tape recorder. Today it's flash memory chips or memory chips of some other kind. And then finally everything is computer based these days and so the computer is really the window into the electronics and, and the computer allows you to set up a test, you know, basically couple the sensor data so that it configures the electronics properly. You set up, arm the thing to collect data, collect, do a test, and then download it. And also a lot of, a lot of uh, that's also the go-between to the data processing stage where we need to take the data files that we've collected and run some processes on them and, and uh, perhaps export them to other analysis software. So in the 1980s, the same block diagram could have been represented by a, um, a sensor, of course, but probably at the end of a long cable, then a bank of signal conditioners, and then something like a tape recorder, and then we might have had a pen plotter or an optical device, a, 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 um, what we call an oscillograph, a light beam oscillograph, uh, to actually put the data onto paper. No such thing as data processing on a, in a PC in those days because PCs weren't around. You know, if you did any data processing, it was at a computer at some large facility like Hughes or Rockwell or something like that. But a typical modern system has all of the functions of the sensor interface, the signal conversion and storage, and the communications built into the same box. Some people call that a black box. Uh, we make ours blue, but uh, it's all the same stuff, right? You've got a bunch of electronics and you talk to it with a comm link. And you really don't have, you don't really do anything with the hardware. It kind of fades into the background. You plug sensors into it, you talk to it with a PC, and you never really see the electronics. 